Hey, good evening, guys. How are you? Hi, good evening. How is Hi, your teacher? Weekend? Nice to see you again. Nice to see you guys also. So how was your weekend? It could be better, but I, it's, it was nice. It was nice. And you? What you do? Sorry? What did you do? I don't know. The usual things like being at home, uh, go around, uh, pay bills, paying bills or uh, take care of kids and so and so and so. Okay. Watching TV, listening to music, uh, taking a nap. A pretty good time, huh? <laughs> I think so, but not always is so. Some weekends could be could be hard. Yeah, some weekends are hard. You have a lot to do. Yeah, sometimes sometimes it could be hard. But the last weekend was not the case. Hey, teacher. Good yeah, evening. tell me. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, what happened with your hair? Ah, I got a haircut this weekend. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. It's a new, a new look. It's really hot, the weather. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But it saves a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Mm -hmm. And what about you guys? Who else? What else did you guys do this weekend? I was sleeping a lot. I went to a restaurant with my family. Um, just resting. <laughs> what restaurant did you go to? Um, hi. Uh, donkeys. Uh -huh. Donkey. <laughs> how, was the, how was the food? Not too bad. Normal. Normal. <laughs> okay. What kind of food do you prefer? Um, Italian food. Como digo árabe? Uh, Arabian, Arabian food. Arabian? Arabian. 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 <laughs> Arabian. Arabian food. And you know what is a very, very good restaurant? Uh, Vietnamita. Did you know that they were a uh, Vietnamita restaurant here? No sé cómo se dice eso, Vietnamita. I, I never have tried that kind of food. It's amazing. Really, really good. And it's called uh, Mins, Mins Cuisine, something like that. Which is the best? Um, for for uh, Yes. And the best for me is Pakistani, pero más nunca en mi vida la vuelto a comer. <laughs> Solo una vez. <laughs> That sounds that sounds so cool. Yes, it's so so spicy, very spicy. Like Thai, like like Thai food. Mm. food is, is, is very very spicy. Yes. Okay. I didn't know this one. It, here in El Salvador, we have this. Yes, the mm. uh, it's called the the la Vietnamita. Yes, yeah. it's in El Salvador. Is it? It's called the restaurant it's called um means cuisine and it's in front of the um, uh, escuela americana hey you should create a tiktok channel and show the different kinds of food that you you try every week uh, yeah i i really i would love to do that i follow <laughs> i follow a guy who has a, a tiktok channel and many Many kind of foods. Uh, I have uh, know them 
uh, uh, through through him through her through his channel uh, really what is his name Sergio. that would be a ring a, a dream come true for me because i super critica no so, como, how, how do you say that como crítica de cocina <laughs> I yes, I, I criticize food. Criticize food. Uh, mm -hmm. I would like. Ah, to yeah, something that. like that. Something like that. And and the guy the, gives uh, his opinion kind of about every every food, every kind of food. About Vietnamese food, is it uh, a special animal that? You can eat there or something, I don't know, or just. I, I hope eat no, not, nothing strange. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> not, okay. I know. Just, uh, 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 you know, the difference is the, the uh, sausage because you, oh. you can you can taste like uh, tamarindo. ¿Cómo se dice tamarindo en inglés? <laughs> I think it's the same. Tamarindo. Yeah. Tamarindo. <laughs> 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 Uh, is it expensive this kind of food a little bit a little bit. Um, oh. if you compare with other restaurants it's a little it's a little bit expensive because i paid for a, a soup or um like 15 bucks or 14 and 15 bucks and you we usually pay for a soup like five dollars or something like that but it's uh, a big one uh, you can you can share with other other person it's yeah. very good and that sounds that sounds a little expensive, but you're right. But you know, to try one time in your life, you say, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, and you can you can share because I I I pay, I pay one for me, and then they bring like a big a, a, a big um, ¿cómo se llama? Olla. What? Hot. No. What? Hot. Uh -huh. and I was like, oops, I can't eat that. <laughs> That's, like, it's a lot of food, but very very good. Is too much for one person. Yes, yes, you can share one one dish. To Vietnamese people, I mean, people from from Vietnam cook this kind of people. I mean, the owner of the restaurant is the Vietnamese. owner. Yes, it's 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 from Vietnam, and oh. he met his wife in New York, and his wife is Salva Salvadorian. Oh, oh. interesting. Yeah, we have a lot of history. <laughs> well, it's a good, you try. A good, a good, it's a good suggestion. So you you suggest that place to visit? Yes, yes, yes. It's very, oh, it's, yeah. it's very good. At least once you you um maybe a special date or something because it is very fancy the place. You know, it is very uh, you, you you can see a big in the in the middle of the restaurant. There is a big um. ¿Cómo se llama esto? I'm sorry. Animal. Este, pecera. ¿Cómo es que se dice pecera? A bowfish. Bow fish. Fish bow fish. But, but fish the bowl. big one, you know, the, the, it's in, in, a, in, a, in a wall, like uh, a wall. It's very, very, very cute. Very cute, the restaurant. Uh, so, so in that place, uh, besides the food, the bowl of fishes, that's called your attention. Yes, yes, and well, my uh, kids too. <laughs> ah, good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, is it healthy? I mean, next day you wake up very good. <laughs> you know, I was just um, I was crossing the street with uh, with my car, and I see what what does that mean? That means cuisine. Maybe they uh, they sell a uh, kitchen or something like that. I was like, what is uh, that? Okay. But and I mm -hmm. I. Or search in Instagram and I found it. And and you can you can means M I N H S something like that. Means. Okay. Means cuisine. It's very, very good restaurant. Okay. It was a good experience for you. So I'll take a note of that place. Yes, yes, yes. You should try it. When you try it, you 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 have to tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, I guys. Well it it's great. It's great recommendation. And that's great. It's important for us to have time for us to talk and use our everyday vocabulary and use our vocabulary to have normal conversations as well. Uh, I hope everybody's working in the platform. Everybody should be complete already with 
and lesson one, right? Lesson yes. one. Did everybody finish? Yes, teacher. Yes. Yes, Excellent. teacher. Excellent. Excellent. It's some. It's some. Okay. Okay. So we should be just about finishing up with it. Okay. So today, what are we going to have? Today, we're going to be starting off with unit two. What's unit two going to be about? It's going to be up personality types. Okay. And we're going to be watching this video about the best personalities for each type. So what uh, for each type of job. So as an example here, the job for social careers, teaching, medicine, coaching, broadcast journalism, career advertising, we're going to be looking at what type of personality do you need for each of those types? Okay, so watch the video, write down the new vocabulary for you, the new careers or the new ways to describe the personalities. Welcome to Matheson College. Okay, yeah. Sounds like the volume was a little soft. There we go. We'll make sure. Okay. I'm Jamie Fish. Some students arrive on campus with clear career ambitions. But most students need some help figuring out which field of study is right for them. The good news is, help is available. I'm here with Jacqueline Auden, a career advisor from the Career Services Department here on campus. Ms. Auden, you've advised a lot of students over the years about choosing a major and a career path. What should students consider? Well, Jamie, one of the first things to consider is your personality type. Well, along with your skills, abilities, and personal preferences, your personality type can guide you toward finding a major that best suits you. Okay, so how many personality types are there? There are six basic personality types. Artistic, conventional, enterprising, investigative, realistic, and social. Now, the first type is- Okay, did you see that? There are how many types? Six types of personalities, right? That suits you. Yes. Okay. So how many personality yeah. types are there? There are six basic personality types. Artistic, conventional, enterprising, investigative, realistic, and social. Now, the first type is artistic. These people are creative and imaginative, and they prefer to work on one project at a time rather than multitasking. What careers should artistic types pursue? The most important thing for this type of people is being in charge of a creative project. So careers to consider are landscaping, graphic design, web design. I see. The next personality type is conventional. Tell us about that one. Yes, conventional types are practical and orderly. They respond well to rules, procedures, schedules, things like that. What types of careers do conventional type people usually enjoy? Conventional types often enjoy numbers, and they're also good with measuring and analyzing things in general. So often they tend to be bankers, lawyers, building inspectors, and technical writers. Are they good business people? Sure, they can be. They usually work for others. The next type, enterprising people, those are the business owners. Ah, uh, the enterprising type. What characteristics do those people share? They tend to be leaders. They're independent and willing to take risks. They're good at motivating people, so we often find them in sales. Really? Hmm. What careers do they enjoy, aside from sales? Well, they're good at directing projects and people, so they make good managers. Okay, so that's three types. Let's take a look at the fourth type, investigative. Well, this type of person prefers logic to imagination and tends to be precise and detailed. So, Jamie, what are some careers that you think would suit this type of person? Hmm. Science would probably be appealing. You're right. Uncovering mysteries is key to any type of science, but librarians are also the investigative type. Really, any career that involves research 
fits into this category. Hmm. So that brings us up to the fifth type, realistic. Yes, realistic types like to work with their hands, with tools. They want to see the results of their work in physical terms. Hmm. That sounds like repair people to me. Yes, that's right. Also jewelry makers, builders, and engineers. So now for the sixth personality type, which is the one that describes me best. Yes, I think you're right. The last type is social. Social types like people. Their jobs usually involve helping and communicating with others. Oh, but teaching would appeal to social types. Oh, yes. Medicine, coaching, broadcast journalism, and, of course, career advising. That's us, social types. Ms. Alden, thank you for sharing this information with us. It was my pleasure, Jamie. Well, we hope this information has been helpful to you. If you'd like to learn more, visit the Career Services Department and tell them Jamie sent you. Okay. So, quite a bit of information about the six career types. That's important because it's going to be about how we describe and what type of profession you have. So in this moment, what we're going to do, uh, okay, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our groups and we're going to summarize. What did you understand from the video? What are the different types? How did the people work? Okay. What type of jobs do they, should they think about depending on their types of personality? Okay, Your, each group will have two minutes to summarize the information from the video. Ala, do you have any questions? Okay, great. I think that I think también es, uh, I am um, have um, many imagination, <laughs> creativity. Creativity. Good. You yeah. are very very creative person. Creative person. Sorry. You are a very creative person. Creative. Uh, you're, you're a creative person. You're imagining. Uh, yeah, yeah. Why? The, the creative, the creative imagination has uh, helped me to resolve problems in my work. What is the personality? Is uh, Ernesto that resolve uh, problems? Conventional? No. Conventional and artist. I, ah, I, yeah. I think a little <laughs> bottle of them. Bottle. I am realistic. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I like to sing to. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, great. So we have a little bit of summary about the video and tell me, okay, which type of personality are you? And what job do you think is best suited for your type of personality? Social. Social, okay. And what kind of jobs do you think you should have? Mm. I don't know. Any kind of job where I can talk with people. <laughs> so a call center. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> because I like that, that contact, you know, because I'd like to see the people, not, not on the phone, face to face. Okay, okay. All right, anybody else? I was talking to Dennis and I told him that uh, I kind of have two types of personalities, like conventional and enterprising. Okay, so you want to start conventional because I I like numbers, um, and enterprising because I work for myself. Okay, and Wilbert, uh, do you have your own business, or would you like to start your own business? I would like to start my own business. Okay, okay. Yes, that's it. Enterprising. Anybody else? Well, uh, I think I am. In the investigate, investigate. That's because uh, I I work in a lab, in a, in the aduanas lab. So I have to find out what are the things are made of, uh, related, and we have to relate it. That's the the composition of the task, in the in a in a, in a, in a classified task. So we have to uh, see many books. Uh, search in the web also uh, for what kind of things are made so, uh, the the object the sample okay all right interesting so we have many different types of personalities in the class right and all of the different things or different personalities that you guys do also are actions right you if you are creative, uh, if you are investigative, you have all of these different things. Well, when we do those things, those actions, we have what are called gerunds. Gerunds, many times, the people remember because gerunds are the words with ing. So gerunds are the verbs, okay? You can think of it as verbs plus ing. Right in the chat. Oh, actions, for example, cooking, swimming, dancing, whatever. The idea is that it has an ING. And this ING can be an action, like, you know, cooking, or it can be the noun, which is the topic, like being a chef. Today, we're going to watch a little bit about how this works. How do we use gerunds and exactly what are they? Okay. So for this one, I'll show you. This is 2.3 in the platform. If you're in the platform, this is 2.3, and it's about gerund phrases. And how do we use them, what they are, and how we can have them as a subject or as an object, okay? And as you can see here, voting, choosing is the verb with ing, and that's the idea of a gerund. Let's watch the small video to discover some more information. Welcome to this class. In this class, what we want to do is we want to practice gerund phrases, as we're going to learn how gerunds are used as subjects and also how they're used as objects. And uh, you might have seen and you might be a little bit confused about this whole deal here. So for example, whenever you see, uh, like at hotels, you see no smoking, uh, no parking, all that. You might think that that is wrong, but actually it's not. And then we're going to try to make sense of all of that here. Um, and then, so let me give you an example on how this is used. So we're going to talk a little bit about politics uh, a little bit. Uh, not going into details, of course, but just some general things about it. Uh, so running for office. Well, look at a couple of sentences here and then uh, just uh, see some common things that politicians say whenever they're running for office. 
Well, the, the first thing is voting is an important responsibility. Um, improving our schools, fighting for a new hospital, etc. So let me quickly outline that this is a gerund. So a gerund is simply a verb which uh, you um, add ing to, right? And then, uh, of course, there's some spelling things about it that you might have learned in previous classes. But here are some examples on how gerunds are, are used either as subjects of sentences. So for example, voting is an important responsibility. Voting is the subject of our sentence. So it's not acting as a verb. Let's discuss improving our school. So as you can see there, we're using that as an object. And so let's try to make sense of all of this. A couple of more examples. Choosing a candidate takes time. And um, let me point out um, the gerunds here. So choosing a candidate, that's, that's the subject of our sentence. I enjoy working for the people. Okay, that. Okay, I think we understand the main idea. Anything with an ing is going to be the gerund, right? So we have the verb plus ing. We can have working, doing, whatever it is. We can create that into a noun, such as all of the examples that are here, okay? It's all about just the verb plus ing. That's the main focus, okay? An important responsibility. Choosing a candidate takes time. And as you can see, those are subjects of sentences. And of the idea here is that this is going to be singular. So we're always going to have a singular verb. Like in this case, voting is an important responsibility. We could say voting was or voting will be. But the idea is that it's going to be singular. And then the other example, choosing a candidate takes time. Again, choosing becomes the subject of our sentence. And so it becomes a thing, not necessarily um, a verb. Um, and then, of course, we need to follow that grammatical rule that we need to add S to that verb. When talking about this topic, it's important not to confuse the gerunds with the present progressive. So let me give you an example about that. Okay. So here's important because many times we confuse about verb ing and you say, oh, you have to use the verb to be. But right now they're going to explain what's the difference between a gerund and the present progressive, which is I am working, I am studying, she is playing, okay? So here's the important to see the difference. If I express I'm voting today, uh, really what I'm saying is that it's an action that is happening today, right? It, it could be in the future, by the way, as well, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. Um, and on the other hand, voting is an important responsibility. So in that particular case, I'm using that as a present progressive form. On the other hand, I'm using that as a gerund. So I'm using that as the object of my sentence. And so there, it's a verb, and the second example, it's, a, it's the subject of a sentence. And so let me just give you a quick example of what I want you to do. So what is exciting for you? Okay. Well, windsurfing is exciting. Windsurfing is very exciting. Playing soccer is exciting. Going to the movies is exciting. So all of those expressions that you've heard in the past, and they don't quite make that much sense. They should make a lot more sense now. And so what I would like for you to do is to take that concept then and tell me what makes you laugh, what gives you a headache, what is isn't. Okay. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to take, in case you don't have it, I'm going to take a screenshot of this. And this is also going to be in our WhatsApp. Um, so if you have any questions about it, eh, you can refer to the WhatsApp and we're going to practice this right now. The most important part is just remembering that we're just using ING. The difference is that we use the ING at the beginning. Okay. So as an example, it's in the WhatsApp group and you can say whatever makes you laugh. Like for, as an example, for me, watching funny movies makes me laugh. Okay. Or reggaeton, uh, right? Uh, gives me a headache. But that's not, it's a correct sentence, but is not a correct form for the grammar. So I have to use a verb at the beginning. Remember, all the sentences have to have a verb with ing. So I cannot say reggaeton gives me a headache. I have to say 
listening to uh, reggaeton gives me a headache or, um, you know, listening to doing something else or constructing gives me a headache. Uh, doing mathematics exercises gives me a headache, whatever it is. Okay, so you have six sentences with your partners. We have three minutes. Is each partner has the opportunity to finish and to do them um, with in the group. Okay. Uh, Practice talking. Talking, talking. We're going to. Okay, okay. The group. We're going to have two minutes, and then we're going to go. Okay. They both enjoy. What do they enjoy? They enjoy watching the birds. And then, they, I mean, you could you could have said uh, different things. And so what I would also like for you to do is to try to make sense of all of this and try to complete this exercise. So I'll have my virtual students try this out. But I would also like for you to try this out as well. So this is quite easy. Hi, John. I need a... Okay. Was it pretty easy? Teacher, I am alone in my room. Yeah, I'm sorry. What happened? <laughs> I don't have um, a compañero. <laughs> ah, you don't have partner? Uh -huh. Ah, I think it was Rodrigo lost connection. Okay. Uh -huh. he, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Same thing you... happened to me. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think uh yeah, Rodrigo put in the chat that he lost. I don't know who else was his partner. Uh, but sometimes it happens. So okay. So let's take a look then. So we're making sure I think we, we had an opportunity to practice with our partner. And what did we have, okay? So what makes you laugh? Let's give an example. Lydia, number one, Wilbur, number two, Dennis, number three, Natalie, number four, Jonathan, number five, and Jose Perez, number six. Okay, teacher. I start, number one. Yes. Number one, Lydia. Uh, sharing with my family makes me laugh. Good pronunciation, laugh. Laugh. Good, good. Okay, thanks. All right. Yep. Now my turn. Yep. Okay. Um, waiting for someone or something uh, gives me a headache. Okay, good, good. Number three. Yeah. Talking with my brother made me laugh and happy. Ernesto, repeat. I think it was Dennis, but, but what was number three? Okay. Talking with my brother made me laugh 
I I may be happy too. No, number three is the word is impolite. Mm -hmm. Teacher, what is yes. the meaning of polite? That means that it's nice or it's correct. Like, please, excuse me, thank you. That is polite. What is the number three? No lo estoy viendo ahorita el, los números. It's in the chat. In, in, in the, it's in the WhatsApp or it's in the platform. Uh, whichever one you want. Mm -hmm. So number three is the space isn't polite. Mm -hmm. Space. Okay. Can somebody help them? Which one is? Okay. I don't know what what means polite. No. He says he, he said something about nice. Maybe right. lying is not polite, something like that. That's good. Lying isn't polite. Doing or saying something with education, not. Yes, that is that is polite. Mm -hmm. But that is the, the polite or with manners. Exactly. So please, thank you, excuse me. I'm I'm sorry that. All of those are polite. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try number four. It Dancing is, is popular in my country. Repeat then. Dancing is popular in my country. Okay, good. Number five. I, yeah, I thought so. I'm not sure. I think you're number five now, Natalie. I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. How do you say contamination? Throwing waste. Go ahead. Throwing waste destroys the environment. Okay, throwing waste destroys the environment. Good. And Mario, what was the question? How do you say contamination? I know contamination. That. Oh, or, okay. or pollution. Mm -hmm. Pollution. Oh, pollution. Okay. okay. And number six. Uh, teacher, in this case, I am not sure, right? Because it, the, the first word is not. I am not sure if I can say not waiting can be dangerous. The sentence is correct, but it's not too logical, but it's correct grammatically. Uh, that's why I am I am saying this teacher because no, no it's logical, right? Mm -hmm. So so it's, it's not logical, but maybe for example, Jose, it would be better like um not not visiting la campanera can be or, or not no. Oh, okay, no mm -hmm. visit the campanera city can be or, or not or not not uh not paying the rent, for example, for the bus drivers in El Salvador, not paying the rent can be dangerous. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not using the pedestrian lines on the street can be dangerous. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. Natalie, give me the sentence number four. What was your sentence? What was your acceptance? Um, my sentence is eating pupusas is popular in my country. Okay, that's correct. That's also correct. Good. So I think it's clear for everybody how to make uh, gerund and use gerunds for to describe things. Yes. Yes, teacher. Yes. Uh, but I, I have a, a, a pretty doubt. Mm -hmm. um, I understand the main idea about, about the gerund use, uh, but I'm not sure when I have to use them, when it's allowed and in, in, in which cases I, I haven't to use them. Okay, that's my my idea. I I understand. I have the idea that that they use them when it's an action. The the, the situation uh, is like an action, but I'm not sure about it. Okay, so 
really, you use gerund phrases when you describe or when you talk about actions and why that action is important or how that happens, okay? So as an example, cooking, uh, playing soccer, listening to music, whatever action you want. When you have an opinion or a, a description about that action, that's when you use it at the beginning. So cooking is a very nice activity. It's my opinion, but it's only an opinion. So it's not that I cook, it's not that my family cook, it's only my opinion for this action. That's when you use it at the beginning. It, shopping, for me, for me, shopping is very boring. I hate shopping. My wife loves shopping, okay? I love it too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I hate it. It's... Almost all women love go shopping. Yes, yes, I don't know why. It's, I go and I don't care. I, whatever, uh huh. It's not important. There's the money. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. The money. The when you see a lot of people, we see you. They, you think I can do a better thing in in this time. In my house or do something else. It's, it's my opinion, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And as an example, is in the chat is the gerund phrase, how to use this. This is my example. When I talk in general terms about the action. So for me, if you look in the chat, spending money on clothes is not fun for me. That is how we use the gerund phrase. You take the topic, the action, and you describe the action in, ger in general with your opinion. That's normally when you use it. Is that okay for everybody? Yeah, teacher, thank you. Yes. You're welcome, you're welcome, guys. Okay. Now, why do we need to use that? Because it's important for our next activity. Our next activity is that we, just like my example in the chat, you and your partners in 2.4, in 2.4, you don't have to create this, a new sentence. You only have to put the words that are there and you have to put them in the correct order. When you put them in the correct order, you are going to create the gerund phrase. So as an example, here is, is not a man's job designing clothes? Mm, this is not the correct sentence. This is not the correct way to say it. I put the same words, not more words, not less words. I put the same words in the correct order. Designing clothes is not a man's job. Now, what is the difference? I need to make sure I use correct spelling and punctuation. I have to put capital letter. I have to put period. I have to make sure that I use the apostrophe S for possessive here, not apostrophe S. So the punctuation, yes, is my responsibility, but not the words. It's okay, the idea with our partners? Yes. Okay. So for this, it takes a little bit more time. So for this activity, you will have four minutes, one minute per sentence. You will have four minutes with your partner to do it. It's in exercise 2.4, okay? 2.4 in the platform. Okay. Sure you open your platform and you do it. That way it registers your grade and you don't have to do it again later.
Okay, in the first one, I think it can be taking care of children must be very challenging. I don't know if you agree with that. Go ahead, guys. You can give your opinion. It's okay. You don't have to be quiet. It's good to talk. It's okay to talk. Okay. Okay. For me, the the first one uh, is be more okay. The uh, uh, crumble uh, sentence is very challenging. Taking care of children must be. For me, is uh, taking care of children must be very challenging. How, how do you make it? No? Uh, give, me, give me a second. Uh, is it 2.4, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, taking okay, number two, uh, I think is working on a movie set uh, sounds fascinating. Sounds fascinating. Yeah, I yes. have the same. Yeah, it's uh, working on a movie set sounds fascinating. Yeah. And the tree correct. I put making strawberry. Sorry, I, I, I didn't hear you. The tree I put making a living as an artist to be pretty difficult. Making a living, a living as an artist could be pretty difficult. Hey, if it is okay, all of them. Oh, there is the teacher. Teacher, we have a doubt in the third one. Is that correct? Making a living as an artist could be a pretty difficult. Yes. Right? Yeah. Making a living, like trying to be an artist, right? Correct. Uh, like trying to be an artist. Okay. A living as a... Four minutes is like flash, huh? Yes. <laughs> yes. And imagine it's four minutes. It's one minute per sentence. Only... only we did it. We did it. You did it. Hey, who was your partner, Limar? Who was your partner? Uh, Natalie and Ada. Woo, good job, bro. Good job. Okay. My group did it too. Excellent, Wilbur. Perfect. And you checked? Everything was correct? Yes. That's what I'm doing. Uh, I am on the number four. Write it down. Okay, okay, okay. Let's take a look. What was number four? Then? What was what did you guys have for number four? The number four working was... as an architect. Mm -hmm. as an Interesting. Architect. Repeat one more time, Wilbur. Working as an architect sounds interesting. Correct. Correct. Good. Okay. So you can see how we can use the gerund phrases not only for actions, but also to talk about professions, describing your jobs or other things, right? So maybe for me, working in my company is very interesting. Or in your profession or your area, oh, uh, going to work on Sunday is more money. Ooh, this is good too, right? So it all depends, all of the different things. Okay, all right. Any questions? No, no question. No. No? No, at this moment, no. Uh, it's, I have the same problem. I think the writing is incorrect for okay. number three. For number three? Yeah. What did you write for number three? Let's take a look. You put? Making. A living as an artist could be pretty difficult. I don't yes. know what, yeah, that, but 
uh, even I, I I use copy paste and it was wrong. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Probably the letter, the letter capital. Maybe the capital letter. Yes, in print. Okay. Okay, Did you first making? I put it uh, with no copy. Just copy and paste in the chat. But right now, and we can tell you. Copy and paste your answer in the chat, and we can tell you what is the mistake, Jonathan. Okay. Wait. 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 I'm, uh... Mm -hmm. Let me see. We can help. That's why we are here. We help each other. Okay, thank you. I will write it. Uh, make a could be a uh, well, look. I'm so making a living as an artist could be as an artist. I don't know if it's Call B is it's two times. Call B, call B. Yeah, two, the two could be is incorrect. Yeah, this could be. Ah, oh, okay. I know. Yeah. Could be. Could. Uh -huh, there, I will. It's only. So, and making with capital letter. Yeah, so it should be. It, it should be like the example there. You are the correct idea, but only one could be. Only yeah. One yeah, I just could be. Yeah, now it's, okay. now it's like, correct. Yeah. No problem, no problem. It happens, right? Many times you are writing and you are, hey, but I have it and, and your brain doesn't see that it's two times the words. <laughs> Let's hear that to me. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but okay, all right. Great. Now we're going to begin our introduction for comparisons. Do you remember how to make comparisons? Uh, like bigger than? Yes. Okay, good, good. Like bigger than? Mm -hmm. Better or worse? Better, exactly. Those are some, in, some irregulars. Uh huh. Good is better. More expensive than? more expensive than uh, do you remember yes more than less than more than less than excellent excellent okay taller than good so we're going to watch a small video on how we can use or how to use comparison okay so let's watch a small video about comparatives you have the correct idea i see you everybody remembers which is excellent Hi everyone, by the end of this class you'll be able to compare different jobs using adjectives and nouns. For example, let's say that you're considering being a fashion designer or an accountant. Being a fashion designer is more interesting than being an accountant. Or maybe you're considering working as a doctor or a nurse. So a doctor has worse hours than a nurse. So in order to express these ideas, we need to use adjectives and nouns to make these comparisons. So let me do the following. Let me just uh, present the structure. But uh, before we do that, what I would like to do is present this um, comparison structures. Uh, let me just quickly point out. OK. And this is what you guys told me. Many of you remember more than, less than, better, worse. And then we have we have a couple that we didn't mention, which is as as and not as as. As as, as is that things are the same. So it's like another way to say equal, no more, no less, is that the equal, the same activities or the same description. And then of course, not as is that it's not equal. As an example, I am as tall as my son. So my son and me, the same, we are the same height. If I say I am not as tall as my son, it means I am small and my son is tall. I'm not as tall as my son. These are some of the words that we use with comparatives. Okay. Let's go on. Because okay, or being an accountant. So let's try to make the comparison with, between two jobs. Um, what we'll do is we'll select this first two, as you can see here. So we have this one looks like a lawyer and 
picture number two looks like a mechanic. So let's make the comparison between lawyer and a mechanic. Before we do that, we want to have some uh, word-related adjectives in mind, such as stressful, fantastic, fascinating, difficult, easy, interesting, dangerous. And of course, there are many more, but because of time, we're not going to go through um, a lot of other adjectives. Uh, and we also want to have, uh, or we want to consider work-related uh, nouns. So what are nouns? They're just people, places, or things, right? So in this case, when we think about jobs, we want to think about things like hours, how many hours you work, education, uh, how much education do you have, uh, work, uh, is your job, does your job consist of doing a lot of work, right? Uh, and these are the kind of things that we want to keep in mind in order for us to make uh, these comparisons. So what can we say about a lawyer versus, uh, let's say, a mechanic, right? We want to make the comparison between those two. Well, uh, we could say the following. I think we could say that working as a lawyer uh, is more <coughs> stressful than working as as a mechanic. So we will use an adjective in this case. I decided to use the adjective stressful. Uh, and it's, I think it's also important to mention that this is an, an opinion, right? So my opinion could be different than yours. You could think the opposite of this. So I, I wouldn't know neither one of those two because I never worked as a lawyer or as a mechanic, so I wouldn't know which one is more stressful. Let me pause it there so we can get the idea. So when we're talking about the jobs, profession, descriptions, we just put them. Remember, we learned gerund. So for example, working as a lawyer, being a lawyer, whatever you want to say is, and then your opinion, the comparison is more stressful, is, a, is less a stressful, whatever you think, or is better, uh, whatever you want to mention. This is how we use it. All of them is the same structure. Let's take a look at another sentence, okay? We can change it, working as a mechanic, okay? It's less stressful than working as a lawyer. So we're using the two professions and we're just using two different comparison structures. Notice that after more or less, I put my adjective, stressful, exciting, interesting, you know, whatever you want to describe, and then then. Is necessary then? Yes, because you need to have the continuation. You need to finish the description. You cannot say working as a lawyer is more stressful because we don't know compared to what or what we are talking about. So then is to be specific what you are comparing it to. That's why it's necessary then and then the continuation, okay? Or as you can see in the third sentence, Working as a lawyer is as interesting as working as a mechanic. What does that mean? That means the two are the same. The lawyer is interesting and the mechanic is interesting. They are equal. Any questions in this moment? No. I have a question. No, uh, can we use with comparative uh, clear, clear, older or something like that yes you can um it, you can use anything that you want with it but it's only it has to match for the profession or for the job uh, of course in this moment for the profession or job but you can use the same structures to talk about people i can say for example mario uh, mario nelson is older than natalie right but I, I cannot say Mario Nelson is older. It's obligation to describe who or what I am comparing to. Okay. 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 Great. Teacher, what, yes. what about oldest? It's for superlative. All this is for three things or more, not for two things. For two is ER. Only for ER. Okay. This is going to be our topic to begin tomorrow in case you want to study or review. Okay. 
remember you should be complete today you should be complete unit one and complete up to you yeah unit 2.4 or lesson 2.4 which is what we did in the activity with the partners okay Whew. okay all right time is like flash guys the time is like flash so already it's time for us to go but i see you tomorrow okay all right, see you tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow, guys. Oh. Have a great night. Bye. 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 Bye